can't wait to play the new stuff for fans, you know. I can't wait to get on stage with it. Yeah, it's definitely nice to play new material. Some of these songs on Hybrid Theory we've been playing for like six and a half years. There's a lot of kids who like are going to be bummed that we're not playing a lot of the older stuff. There's definitely a couple where I wouldn't be upset if we didn't play them anymore ever again. You know, one step closer, even though it's like not one of my favorites, everybody else seems to love that song. The songs are kind of like our kids. You like some of your kids better than others, but you love them all. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. It's fired up. As I was going into the studio, like I'd have basic things down and you know, to have a skeleton of what I wanted to do. But working with a producer who was really there and involved with the record, that being Don Gilmore. Don was a good person to be able to try out some new ideas and to help me to fit those into what, what was going on musically. He laces the track. Uh, you lace uh, the track, Don. I lock the flow. That's what it is, okay. I think the fact that Don was a bass player just really helped me to realize that he was smarter than your average person. In general, you know, bass players are smarter. There was so much brain power in here when these bass tracks were going down. It was just almost too much. I played the Music Man, it's an Ernie Ball, and Stingray 4 and 5 strings. Right here, you can do this at home to mark the positions of the tone pegs. That's just regular tape. You know, you just tape on over them and then you can't turn them anymore. This is volume. So you just put that at 11 and you're ready to go. And here we have sound room where we mic all of our amps. We got guitar cabinets all lined up. We stick them in here because they get pretty loud and we don't want to listen to them at full volume. So we sit in there. I don't know if you can really see it because of the light. That's the control room. And then uh, stuff's being mic'd in here. And you have the uh, my amps, my cabinets. In the studio I pretty much use the same gear that I would use live and that, that would be a uh, Ampeg SVT2 head with the SVT Classic cabinet and the Sansamp PSA-1 for some uh, just distortion sounds and a little bit more of an EQ on it. Yes, Brad has three cabinets, I have two cabinets, but if you do a speaker count, because mine has eight per cabinet and Brad's only has four, he's got 12, but I've got 16 speakers. The 16's better than 12. Over here you can see we like to build little forts. Uh, that's actually the vocal fort. Here's the inside of the vocal fort. It's got a little stool, like a music stand with satiny crap everywhere and they get little little silky sheets and a little fort you know why do you need a fort you don't need a fort see. but for some reason they, the vocalists get a fort and brad and i just get a stool see where those rugs are rolled up that's where the drums were now they're gone because they rattle and this is where i this is the piano room this is where i play all the piano on the record That's, you're not supposed to disclose that. I can't see. Yeah, I mean, you guys will probably hear this once the album comes out, so it's okay for me to play stuff from the record. You know, sometimes ideas will just come to you, almost like you're channeling them. Like, I'll just use my knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> the, the working title for that song actually was Knuckles. I'm gonna rock the mullet. Today we're gonna be getting a haircut. Look at the camera, bro. I like to enjoy a nice riptide rush. All right, what's the vision here? The best mullet ever. I will practice safety while sporting the safety cut, which is safe in the front, the parentals, you know. Parental's girlfriend, whatever. It's very business in the front, but it's also safe for friends, the party in the back. Bo, do not eat the hair. How does it feel? It makes me feel depressed. <laughs> makes me feel sad. Okay, you're in a crucial point right now where if you want to go a lot shorter on the top, so it's spiky. Or do you want to go just like come over? Go calm down. It's probably nastier, huh? Feels right. Almost feels too right. Hello, oh, smile. My new thing is I'm smiling in every picture. What? That's my new thing. You smile. <laughs>
See, I'm just uh, doing a lot of scratching and doing some programming, just atmospheric sounds and just adding more flavor on top of what's there. Um, trying to take away from the rock vibe. You got your cake, your layers of cake. And I'm putting all the dressing and flowers on top of it. I use tons of equipment. This is Mount Han. Yeah, Mount Han. This is all Joe's equipment right here. We had to like lift over our heads to put on stage the whole first year we toured. Don Gilmore hasn't really worked with any DJs. For him, it's kind of uncharted territory. If it's distracting, then he'll say it's distracting. And if it's good, then he'll say it. Oh, I think that's cool. So it's like when we're in the studio, it's pretty much me and Mike. Where's uh, Johan coming in through now? Uh, Mike and I, we usually come up with all the sounds. Our songs are on the average 39% scratching and 5% five, five to 8% keyboard. The rest of the percent is uh, bobbing my head up and down. <laughs>